Once more, a very good, happy, pleasant morning. We've had rains the last couple of nights in Bangalore, so the weather has again become very, very pleasant and cool. Let's see what the summer has to bring for us. In fact, I was just thinking how the weather teaches us to become flexible. We did not anticipate till even a couple of days back that suddenly there's going to be rains in uh, Bangalore. But if I am flexible and if I understand that even though summer is starting now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be very hot. It could be pleasant. It could be rainy. And if so, am I having that flexibility to be able to think in that uh, direction? Okay. Let me give you a little bit of background. Look at small babies or tiny uh, children, uh, you know. Most of them are very, very flexible. They have very basic needs and they understand certain things and they accept a lot of things. But the initial upbringing of a child, as I keep reminding all of us, makes a lot of difference in what sort of thinking pattern we develop. Pampered children, for example, tend to become self-focused. Children who have been given the impression that you will get what you want. Children who are not taught, you know, delayed gratification. Children who throw tantrums and their elders succumb to those tantrums by getting irritated and saying, okay, take what you want, but don't make a noise. Those are the children who at a very early age learn to become more and more rigid, fixed, and self-focused. They develop this habit. You must have seen some small children. They develop this uh, you know, habit of all or nothing. Supposing there's a packet containing a number of chocolates. And you say, take one or two or what five. The child says, no, I want the whole packet. If you say, no, you can't have the whole uh, uh, packet. You can have two or five or whatever I telling you. The child says, then I don't want the chocolate. Same thing can be done. There are two chocolates. One has got a green wrapper and one has got the blue wrapper. And you are offering the blue wrapper and the child says, I want the green wrapper. Sometimes without even realizing why I am wanting it. You know, it's a feeling of I should get what I want. <clears throat> I can make demands. And if you tell the child, no, you will not get the one with the green wrapper. You'll get the one with the blue wrapper. The child says, then I don't want the chocolate at all. Now, who's the loser in that process? The child is. He was getting a chocolate and he says, I don't want it. Why does he do that? Because somewhere he is moving towards what we call as that rigid or, you know, black and white thinking. That if I make a demand, I should get what I want. I am not going to compromise. This is a word of caution to all of you who deal with small children. Never ever give in to tantrums. Never ever, you know give that instant gratification to a, a child. Never give in when the child starts making unreasonable uh, demands. This is the root of this thing called this rigid or this black and white uh, thinking. The other area where people tend to be, <clears throat> you know, quite thinking in black and white terms is people suffering from some sort of very serious mental illness. And that too, when they are symptomatic, if their symptoms have come under control, they are like anyone like you and me or everybody. They are, in fact, they are wonderful friends to have because they are people who generally are not very crafty. They are not competitive. They don't, you know, uh, do backbiting or jealousy and all that. So that way it's good. But when a person is symptomatic with a major illness, the person starts thinking only in black and white. You would come across, for example, a person who is struck down with uh, schizophrenia. And he says, there are people just behind this door who are coming to kill me. Now, whatever logic you use, you go outside, show him the door, show him the whole locality, take him around the 
building, whatever you do, the person still says, no, there are people hiding who want to come and kill me. Now, these are people who cannot help themselves. Their brain is malfunctioning because of their disorder that they have succumbed to. So till the treatment is done and they come back to some sort of, you know, asymptomatic uh, uh, living, that rigidity in the thinking, you know, remains. Okay, leaving those people out because that's a specialized topic by itself. Let's talk about a lot of other people who develop this rigid thinking or this black and white uh, uh, thinking. It can be extremely harmful to uh, them. It can, you know, affect them in so many, many uh, uh, ways. And when that uh, uh, you know, happens, you have to be aware that there is this rigidity, uh, you know, uh, setting in. It could be something as simple as your inability to yield or even appreciate others' views. You will notice some people forget about giving in or yielding or you know allowing the other person. They don't even acknowledge or appreciate that there could be another way of doing things. Very dangerous, uh, uh, you know, sign. Lack of empathy or interest in others. Me, myself, mine, whatever uh, it is. You know that Hindi slogan which says, "Mera kya, mujhe kya." Unless I am benefiting from it, I don't care what the other person is getting or what the other person wants. I will look at it only in, from my way. In English, there is an acronym called NIMBY. N-I-M-B-Y. NIMBY is an acronym for not in my backyard. As long as things are not happening in my backyard, that means things are not affecting me in my immediate vicinity. I don't care what happens to others. People who make attempts to control situations or events. I will dictate. I will tell this. It could be something as small as, you know, deciding which restaurant to go to or deciding what to order for everybody. Starting from something as small as that, it can go to very big areas where the person keeps wanting to take all the de decisions. Sticking to a defined set of rules or routines and ignoring the ideas and thoughts of others, as I said, resisting change. And this is something which I want to tell you very, very vehemently. <clears throat> change is coming in at such a fast pace that people who are rigid, who are resisting change, will not be able to adapt themselves to the future things that are happening. In fact, it is not enough to adapt to change. You have to anticipate change. What can possibly be the next turn of events? What does the future probably bring for me? And that ability to look ahead gets very badly pulled down if we develop this rigid, uh, you know, um, thinking. People with rigid mindset, you will also notice, they keep on repeating the same thing. They even forget that they have said a particular statement or a particular view. And within no time, they will be repeating the same thing because they are so caught up in their own uh, selves. They find it very difficult to overcome negative thoughts. Whenever negative thoughts come, they really get miserable. They succumb to it. They don't understand that, yes, it is a negative thought. I have to work my way out from uh, that. And having this compulsion all the time to do something. These are some of the early signs or characteristics which I want you to be, you know, aware uh, of. Then let us look at what could be the long-term effects of having rigid thinking. If I start developing this sort of thinking, in the long run, what is going to happen? So just a few possible pointers, you know, what could possibly, I'm not saying everybody who has rigid thinking will develop this, but yes, most likely the long-term effects are spoiling of relationships relationships can really get affected because every relationship is give and take. Every human being wants to give something and take something from you at the emotional level. But if you have rigid thinking, then it spoils your relationships. People do not give you suggestions and feedback when people feel that you're doing something wrong, when you're headed towards some sort of danger or failure, they won't tell you because they know you don't listen to them. 
this could be a very bad long term uh, effect. It has happened to top notch politicians and governing people. It happens in families. It happens in workplaces. And then your rigid thinking makes you stop your learning and your growth. So every time there is something new to learn, to evolve, to grow, but this rigid thinking you know, uh, prevents you from doing uh, uh, that. And very important, rigidity can also lead to dementia, Alzheimer's disease, all these things. The more flexible you are, the more out of box thinking that you do, the less are the chances that you will develop a debilitating disease like dementia, Alzheimer's, for which there is still no cure. And lastly, change will overtake you. You will become outdated. You will become irrelevant. The world would have moved forward and you would be stuck somewhere in the past. You uh, come across some elderly people no, who keep saying, in my days, this used to happen. In such and such year, this is what was the thing. When I was doing this, 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 this is how things used to uh, be. You tend to become outdated and you tend to become irrelevant if you have this uh, uh, thing. Okay. Let me also tell you why it happens. Achha, by the way, in another few minutes, I'm going to give you a quick little quiz to help you to understand how rigid you are. So I would request you to either have a pen and paper ready, even a small paper. It you know, just has a few uh, questions, about 12 questions, which you have to rate and answer 0, 1, 2, 3, like that. So you don't have to copy the whole thing or whatever it is. So when I read it out to you, you can just do a little bit of scoring. In this particular thing, I'm very high. In this, I'm low or whatever. And total it up. And we'll discuss where you stand in terms of rigidity. So it's a... It's not a very scientific psychometric test, but it definitely helps you to understand if you are becoming more and more rigid. So just be ready with that pen and paper or even if your notepad in your mobile or whatever it is. In a few minutes, I'll come to that. Now, let me tell you why this happens, you know, this concept of uh, uh, rigidity. One of the most important things, as I keep reminding you, is what we learn from our elders. If I have significant elders in my life who are very rigid, then I start mimicking them. I start copying them. And without even realizing it, I grow up to being a very rigid person. So please analyze in your formative years. Did you have people who were inflexible, who were very rigid, who had this black and white uh, thinking? The other very strong reason why a person becomes rigid is if you have been hurt or cheated very badly by somebody whom you trusted, something happened which you did not anticipate at all. And you were let down by somebody, you were cheated by somebody, somebody broke off a very nice and positive relationship with you, somebody stabbed you behind the back, gossiped about you and spoiled your reputation. Any of these things if you are not careful and if you don't understand that this was one human being and this was one incident, we tend to generalize and we tend to become very rigid in dealing with all the other type of uh, uh, people. Then there are people who want to remain in their comfort zone. They don't want to take risks. This also partly is uh, affected by your uh, growing up years, but in general, People who have this thing of, you know, wanting to remain in a comfort zone. No, Baba, I know this. What is, we generally call as the known devil, right? So this is the known devil. I think I will stick to this. I don't want to take a chance. The moment you become cautious and you start you know, remaining in your comfort zone, rigidity automatically overcomes uh, uh, you. There are also, incidentally, a couple of disorders which are connected to or which, uh, you know, make rigid behavior uh, of uh, people. One is what is known as OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Most of you must be aware of it. When you start getting obsessed with something and the obsession does not remain at the thought level, it converts into actions. So it becomes compulsive. You must have heard of 
you know, people who keep washing their hands 50 times a day or a person who locks up his cupboard or his uh, house and keeps going back n number of times to check whether I've locked up or not. A person who has switched off the gas but keeps running back to see whether I've actually switched off the gas or uh, not. So when your obsession converts into compulsions, you know you have an important meeting or you know that somebody is waiting for you, but you cannot overcome that compulsion. So people suffering from OCD to whatever level, they very obviously become very rigid and uh, they uh, cannot you know, think in terms of other things which are beyond the routine. The other disorder which tends to make people uh, rigid is what we call as ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. As you must be aware by now, autism started becoming a matter of concern about 30 years back and has consistently increased because we are finding more and more children who come under the spectrum of ASD. We find you know, that there are people who are otherwise competent, whose basic, uh, what do you say, IQ and everything is okay, but they cannot communicate. They are inwardly focused. That's why we call them uh, autistics. Now, even these type of uh, people tend to be. So these are just some of the examples to help you to understand why this happens. And with that, I come to the most important part of the first half of this program. And that is what you can do to overcome this rigidity. Even if you're tending towards that, even if it is minor, they say no prevention is better than cure. So start thinking what you can do in terms of, you know, overcoming this uh, rigidity. First, be aware and list down where you are rigid. I don't allow my family members to do this, this, this because of some, you know, old time thing that no, this is the only way it has to be done. I don't want to go to any new restaurant or a new shop. I only keep going back to the old ones. Think you will be able to list down the areas. If you're truthful to yourself, you will be able to list down a lot of areas where you tend to be uh, uh, rigid. Make that list in your own interest. And then start with the small things I mentioned. No, that. I always wear the same type of dress or the same color or the same fabric or whatever it is. I always like to go to known and very same restaurants and I like to order the same dishes. So point out the small ones to yourself so that you can start working on them. It won't be very difficult. If you take up major issues where you are rigid, it may not be so easy to change. So start with these small ones. And in order to do that, if you can't make a comprehensive list, get feedback from reliable sources that I'm trying to do an introspection. How much is my rigidity or my, you know, black and white thinking and all that? Can you please help me? You know me very well. You see my behavior. You see my actions. Can you tell me where you think that I have this uh, uh, habit of being uh, quite uh, you know, rigid on these uh, um, things? And like I told you, you need to anticipate change. It's not enough to be able to adapt to change. Only flexible thinking al allows you to anticipate change. So the more you start doing flexible thinking, the easier it is for you to anticipate what changes are going to come in your life and how to deal with it. One of the ways of doing this is to start using all parts of your brain and start doing what we call as out of box thinking. If you are a logical person, start thinking emotionally. If you are a mathological person, start thinking out of box into creativity. If you are a you know, purely a sequential person, start thinking in terms of interpersonal skills. Like that, if you start doing out of box thinking and start using all parts of your brain, automatically your you know, rigidity comes down. Take interest in activities where the outcome is unsure. Yeah, I wanted to learn swimming, but I'm not sure. I may not be able to do it. I'm scared of water. I don't know how that coach will be. I don't know whether people will laugh at me. Yes, you have that doubt. No, go ahead and learn. Make that effort. 
And once you succeed, even partially, you will get that confidence to be able to start looking at uh, uh, things more and uh, uh, more. For example, go for a vacation without knowing anything about the place. Most of us tend to plan out. And nowadays, vacation spots have those ratings, you know. So many people who have been to that place, what their ratings are and all that. Why do you bother? Why do you want to go by others' opinion? You form your own opinion. Explore and find out that, yes, this is what I am looking for. I am looking for a secluded beach or I am looking for the hills or I am looking at this or that or whatever it is. And go. Take a chance. Take a risk. You can always change your uh, schedules or your activities, isn't it? And just be aware. It's not proven, but just be aware that is there a genetic component? That's why I put a question mark against it. There's a possibility that there's a genetic uh, element. If you feel that you belong to a family where everybody has had rigid thinking for years or even for generations, then become more aware of it and may take more and more of these precautions that I have been telling you. Okay. Now, if you are ready, I think I will run you through quickly with this simple little exercise. Write down numbers 1 to 12. You know, there are 12 points which I'm going to say. For each one of these, the scoring is like this. It is between 1 and 5. 1 is never. 2 is sometimes. 2 is rarely. 3 is sometimes. 4 is usually. And 5 is always. So as you see each of these statements coming up, you don't have to copy these statements. You can take a photograph if you are quick uh, at it for your further use. But focus more on truly you know, uh, assessing yourself. So when the first one comes on, do I do it always? Do I do it usually? Do I do it sometimes? Do I do it rarely? Or I never do it. Here's the first one. I prefer to eat in the same restaurant or same dishes. Do I do it always? Five. Do I do it most of the time? Four. Do I do it sometimes? Three. Do I do it rarely? Two. I never do it. I always keep exploring new restaurants and new menus and new dishes. Then one. Got it? So we'll proceed with uh, uh, this second one. I like to keep my table or furniture facing the same way. I like things to be kept in this, this, this manner. I want my laptop in this place. I want this here. I want that there. How often you do it? The third one is I stick to the same basic dressing style. I don't want to change dresses. I have my favorite colors. I have my favorite, even, you know, brands which I use for my uh, uh, dressing. So in the morning, what I wear, in the evening, what I wear, when I go out, wear, what I wear, how, you know, fixed I am in things pertaining to dressing. Similarly, holidays, Sundays, free time, working days, you have compulsions, you have to do what is being, uh, you know, told to you. But when you have the total freedom of a Sunday or a holiday, do you still have a fixed program? Do you still get up at the same time? Do you still do the same activities? Do you still have your bath at the same time? Think of it and put the rating. Number five, I prefer fixed time for discussions or meetings. I like to have this meeting at this particular time. I want to discuss this. I want to allot exactly half an hour to finish this topic so that I can move on to something else. You know, new things keep coming up which you cannot anticipate. So are you in a position to think of, you know, keeping yourself flexible? The sixth one is, I get upset if people come to see me without appointment. Suddenly a neighbor walks in, a friend calls you up. Yes, you have a right to say that right now I'm busy, I'm in a meeting or I'm completing some tasks, I will get back to you or something. But the point is, do you get upset? Do you get jittery? Do you get shaken up when that happens? So that was the first lot of six. Okay, We have 12 of them, as I told you. If you have already scored for the first six, we'll go on to the next uh, lot. Number seven. I get upset if someone contradicts me on issues in which I have strong views. I'm not discarding your right to have strong views. I'm not discarding your you know, right to express your views. But please note, I have written, I get upset if somebody contradicts me. 
I make it into an emotional issue. How often I do it. Number eight is I prefer to watch the same TV serials or entertainment, whatever is my form of entertainment. If I look at, you know, Amazon Prime, I look only at Amazon Prime. If I look at Netflix, I look only at Netflix. If I play badminton, I play badminton exactly between 5.30 and 6.15 every evening at such and such badminton court. So even your leisure or your entertainment activities, whether you continue to do the same thing almost on a daily basis. The ninth one. I do not read literature or books not relevant to me. In fact, I should start by asking you, do you read at all? So many people have even given up on the habit of reading from the time audio visuals came in and, you know, YouTube <coughs> came in and what is that Instagram came in. But I cannot overemphasize the need for you to be doing reading. And if so, when you read, do you say that I am an accountant, so I will read only accounts books. I am a real estate person, so I will read only something related to real estate. Are you the type of person who does not read literature or books not relevant to me? And 10th one, I prefer to be given clear instructions and authority. Don't keep changing. Don't keep adding new things. Tell me what to do and I will do it. Give me a list of tasks. Give me a deadline and I'll finish it and come back to you. But in between, don't discuss with me or don't keep making changes. Is that your attitude? The 11th one is... I prefer to do more or less the same type of work. Whatever I like, I will do only that. I like going into the kitchen and cutting the onions. I will do that and pass it on to the main person who's doing the cooking. I will not take up any other task. That's a very small example I'm giving you. And the last one, this is very important. I prefer old friends rather than meeting new people. And as I said, I want you to rate yourself from 1 to 5. I always keep meeting new people, score 1. If I never like to meet new people, score 5. So in between, where is it that you stand? So here were these 12 questions. And I presume that you have put your marking on uh, uh, that. So those of you good children who have done your you know, test very diligently, let me help you to do your own scoring. You are going to be your own examiner. 12 questions, each one rating between 1 to 5. Total up your square uh, score for all the 12 questions. You will get a total figure. I'll wait for half a minute for you to quickly total it up. Now. If your score is below 25, hearty congratulations. You are a person who will adapt, who will anticipate change, who is open to different types of thinkings, and thereby you will continue to grow, evolve, adapt, and be happy in any circumstance. Your area of concern comes in only if your score has been above uh, 25. But even that, I would put it as a minor thing. Let's say it's between 25 to 35. Minor areas. Just that small little warning signal. As I grow older, I tend to become more and more rigid. So am I heading towards that if I'm scored 28 or 31 or whatever it is, right? If you have scored above 35, then I definitely want you to do something about it. You can do it by yourself. It's not that you are suffering from any major disorder or that you need therapy or any other thing. But be aware that, yes, I can't allow this. I've already gone fairly deep into the uh, you know, uh, thinking uh, uh, pattern. If your score has been above 45, then as I take my break and my cup of tea, you better start planning how you are going to take help because probably you may not even be able to do it by yourself. This is not a threat. This is not uh, something to scare you, but just to help you to improve your quality of life. Please think it over, total it up, make your plan later. Take a quick one minute break while Sonal updates you on what is happening in Banjara. 
and then I'll be back. Good morning, everyone. Beautiful topic. And for me, the attraction was the colors, the black and white. There's so much in between also, right? I will just tell you, I will take you a little off, but I'll tell you something which I observe every day in Ali's cabin. You know what? That is the most interesting part of it is the morning sun rays fall on a specific um, glass and once that sun rays are reflecting we see beautiful spectrum of rainbow colors that's the power of white color so if you think that you know you want to work towards expanding your vision expanding and exploring yourself rather than you know putting things into that black and white if at all you are going through that or you are dealing with a person who is putting things into pockets and I can understand how stressful that can be if you don't find the gray area, if you cannot find a midway to deal certain things and that person is very important to you. Imagine such a state. If you are going through that stressful or such a situation, you can help yourself or you can even help people going through such a situation with our diploma in counseling skills. It does wonders. It's a one year part time course. And especially this year, it's a 25th batch. You will be the student of a silver jubilee batch of diploma in counseling skills. Oh my God, that's so exciting for you, for me rather. Hi, Jayati. Good morning. Vinita, good morning. Lovely good mornings. Vijay Lakshmi, Jay Shri. Everybody, I am wishing you good morning. But do try and understand what I was telling, what I see every day in a lizard's cabin. The ray, which is the sun rays, which are almost white. We don't even say it as a white. But when it hits the right point, it spreads into rainbow colors. Isn't that beautiful to see that natural phenomenon that happens? That is there in us also. We have wonderful emotions. If you open up your right place in the brain, you will see all the emotions clearly, beautifully. And then you decide what you want to do with it. And that is what will be helped through our one year part time course, Diploma in Counseling Skills. And if you want to know anything about it, you all know whom to get in touch with. And that is Anis. She is more than happy to help you all explain you everything that is needed, even the course content, timing, fees, whatever questions. She will patiently explain you everything. So whoever you feel is going to be helped with this program, please pass this message to them. Thank you. Hmm. Lots of very flexible and out of box thinkers who are in our chat box. I noticed quite a few comments and questions. Let me start with Roshan. I have a friend who is an eminent doctor, rigid in thinking, so much so that she will order what she likes, least bothered about what I like. She will tell me to cook in her house, standing behind me and dictating her terms of how to cook when I know how food and good I am at cooking. It becomes so disgusting that you want to run away from her house as soon as possible. Yes, Roshan, I can understand your predicament. And if she happens to be a very dear friend or somebody you know, whom you have been emotionally attached to, sometimes you have to be a little tolerant. But 
if the person is a qualified professional, if the person is mature in terms of age and those things, let us accept that it may not be that easy to change. If you have already made your efforts to talk to her once, twice, thrice, saying, you know, a simple thing like, yes, uh, my dear, I have been cooking for the last 30 years. I'm fairly good at it. Why don't you relax? Why don't you go and, uh, you know, listen to some music or read something? I'll make something. After I make it, you tell me if you're not happy with it, then I'll make the changes. Try it at all. If you've already tried it and there is no way that she listens to you or even bends, you know, partially to you, then you have to keep away from this type of people. As far as activities are concerned, I'm not saying you, you know, cut off your friendship or something, but things like cooking, things like this and that, avoid, meet the person, have a chat and move out from there. Okay. Asha says, drawing a parallel to chocolate wrapper choice and the dress or attire selected to buy and wear has to be taught early in life. Yes, Asha, I agree with you. So that as a child grows, the skill of decision making gets reinforced. What matters is the chocolate taste and the dress that one must wear must be checked using a mirror. Growing up, the choice we make helps to be able to lead forward and that depends on decision making. Yes, Asha. The first part of what you said, make a note of you, all of you, that good decision making should be taught to all of us. The earlier, the uh, better. After that, there should be some sort of a, uh, you know, introspection and analysis of that. You tell a child, you know, we are in the restaurant, you select what you want to order. Or we are going out. I have ironed two t-shirts, the green and the yellow uh, one. You select what you want. Once the child has done that, observe whether the child is sticking to the yellow one all the time. Then you know that the child is heading for rigidity. When you are told the child you can order anything you want uh, in the restaurant and the child always keeps uh, ordering masala dosa, you know that the child is heading towards rigidity. And this can apply to adults also, adults with whom you are closely connected if you find them doing the same thing. Once you realize that, then start practicing or teaching the person the practice of how to reduce that rigidity by making the person aware of why the need is there in the first place and why you feel that this person has become or is tending towards rigidity and what can be done about it, right? Roshan again says, rigid thinkers are often lazy ordering others to do all their work and they don't want to leave their comfort zone. That's right. It's exactly what I also said. So that's another indicator that this person has developed a lot of rigidity. Akila says, good morning. I am very comfortable with my haircut, that is short hair. Many suggest me to grow my hair and they sometimes make fun of me, comparing me with the other gender. But I am comfortable with my short hair. Is it rigidity? No, I would not you know, straight away label it as rigidity, but I would ask you a question. Have you tried to see what happens if you have a different hairstyle or if you have longer hair or if you have even shorter hair than you have uh, right now? If you have just experimented with it once in a while. So now you're a school teacher. You maintain the same type of look throughout the academic year. Now holidays are starting. You won't be going to school. Maybe for the next one or two months, let your hair grow and see how it feels. Once you have found out that, no, it is inconvenient. It doesn't suit me. I don't like it. Then you go back to it. So all I'm saying is rigid people are not open to step out of their comfort zone. Are you doing that? As long as you are not doing that, I'm sure you have a right to have your own hairstyle or dressing style or whatever else it is. Uh, Aina says DCS certainly brings a lot of positivity in life, changes your life to a great extent. Yes, Aina. And let me also, I mean, you allow me to be immodest. It also teaches you flexibility because we go on drilling into the DCS students that there cannot be only one way of doing things. There cannot be only one therapy. There cannot be only one indoctrination or style or whatever uh, it is. So we encourage our trainees of DCS to start thinking outside the box, to question, to understand. That is a USP that we try to inculcate, not only in our DCS students, but also counselees who come to us or whoever we interact uh, with. 
Shamla says, are rigid people selfish? Quite often. I told you that rigid people can only think of themselves. They are, I mentioned that they are poor in empathy. They don't allow others' viewpoints. They are not open to discussion. So that in a way is selfish nature, no? It may not be selfish materially, but it is definitely selfish in terms of your thoughts, your emotions, your actions. That is where rigid people definitely become more and more selfish. Sri Devi says, lack of vision, discipline, routine, going with flow. Is it being in the comfort zone? No, I would not generalize uh, 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 that way. There are different reasons why people have lack of vision or you know, discipline, routine or going with the flow. We have to look at each of these things individually with the background of the person. <clears throat> Sorry. Then only you will know why this has happened and whether it is, you know, what are the consequences of it, what you can do in terms of changing. That has to be looked at at an individual uh, level, right? Divya says, DCS has changed my life so much. It is helping me in each and every walk of life. Thank you so much, Ali. Yes, Divya, thank you so much for the compliment. We always appreciate. And these little words of appreciation, you know, are what keeps all of us in Banjara motivated to continue with our humble mission. So it's not just Ali, DCS or Banjara. <clears throat> my may be the face in front of uh, you, but I assure you that there is a wonderful team of people, all of them contributing in different ways. Divya also says, DC has changed my life. No, I've read that already, yes. Vinita, Vinita says, <clears throat> Ali, sometimes I feel people also get used to being rigid. It becomes their habit, which reflects in their behavior, etc. They don't even realize that they may be causing inconvenience to others. Yes, that is why, Vinita, I told you what could be the you know outcomes of rigidity. And one of them, I, if you remember, I mentioned you know spoiling relationships. Rigidity inevitably leads to spoiling of relationships. So please be aware of that. And people who are not aware, <clears throat> you know, it's like take the example of somebody who is short tempered. If the person is not aware that he's short tempered, if he always keeps giving excuses that, you know, my team members don't work properly, my wife nags me, my so and so does this, my child doesn't behave properly, that's why I shout. No, shouting is in your control. Flexibility is in your control. Rigidity is your choice. You cannot pass the buck and say it is because of others. Hmm. Navina says, receiving regular criticism from certain people has made me closed to them and their feedback. But I'm okay receiving feedback from other people who give it in a nice and a constructive way. So is it that I am rigid to certain people or biased? No. You cannot be rigid to certain people. If you are rigid, you are rigid. It becomes part of your persona. So if you are open to certain people who, as you have mentioned, give you constructive criticism, who genuinely care for you, who are concerned about you, and that is why they point out certain things to you. If you are open to that, if you are listening to them, if you are adapting wherever it is uh, possible, then definitely you are not rigid. On the other hand, I would like to congratulate you for identifying people who have been constantly criticizing you without any, you know, means or without any logical reason and in a destructive manner rather than a constructive manner, then it is better that you cut off from them if possible or stop being affected by them. Hmm. Padmashri says, if people who are rigid are in family, how can we help ourselves so that they don't upset us? Yes, that is the flip side of it. I had mentioned what to do. If you find yourself getting rigid or you know, getting into this uh, uh, rigidity. Now, what do you do when the people are rigid? A few minutes back, I had mentioned that would you first try to make the effort to tell the other person that your you know, closed thinking or narrow thinking is affecting me. That's what I always say about constructive criticism. No, point out the action very clearly and in an un unbiased manner that you have been insisting for the last so many weeks, whenever we go out on a Sunday, 
you have been insisting that we go only to this particular restaurant or this particular mall or something. That is the action. The second thing is how it affected me. I'm not getting opportunity.
हेलो हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग there was a technical glitch in the internet and so we you know had to stop it here itself we are very sorry for that thank you navina that you can hear me i was just wondering whether you could hear or not we are very sorry there was a technical glitch here and uh, we had to stop we tried our best to again go but it's hardly 5 minutes now to uh, you know stop the show there i request you all to email the questions to dr ali's mail id i will share it in the comment box whoever's questions have not been answered kindly do uh, email it to dr ali he will answer it so the next week talk we have on the topic how to enjoy vacations the schools are going to close now after the exams and children also will be finishing their board exams the younger children will finish their exams so and the vacation time for mothers for children for all of them so we have the next topic coming up for the next week is how to enjoy vacations again and again apologies there was a technical glitch and so we had to stop in between please whose ever questions have not been answered kindly do write an email to dr ali he will answer your questions i will be sharing it to you in the comment box you if you have a pen and paper kindly note down it is a l i p h w a j a 50 at the rate gmail.com thank you for joining uh, joining us hope to see you next week on how to enjoy vacations lots of too many things heavy topics rigidity and last time about love all that so i think so next week we can enjoy and relax with how to enjoy our vacations thank you so much see you next week kindly note down dr ali's mail id a l i k h w a j a 50 at gmail.com